In this video, we're going to be discussing a newer turbocharger design that CAT's using in their diesel engines, why it's better than other turbocharger designs, and how it works. So what we're looking at here is a couple year old C15 out of a haul truck. And you can see this is a single turbocharger and it has an EGR system, which CAT actually calls NRS, and what appears to be a normal turbocharger. However, this is not a wastegate. That's actually something called a balance valve. And this turbocharger is called an asymmetrical twin scroll turbocharger. Now CAT is not exclusive for using this. Detroit Diesel also uses this. And just by looking at it, it looks like a normal standard turbocharger. It has the compressor side, it has the turbine side, nothing special. There's no actuator like a variable geometry tur turbocharger would have. The main thing that differentiates this is the port size on the exhaust ports here. You can see that this port, while large on the face, actually narrows down significantly as it goes in, whereas this port is normal size. But we're wondering, well, what the heck does that do? Well, that allows the smaller port to actually build up more exhaust pressure and have lower flow, but higher pressure. And that's why it's called asymmetrical because they're not the same size. Whereas the larger port would flow more exhaust gases, but not build as much pressure. And what this allows the ECM to control and do is change the speed of the turbocharger, the amount of boost, the amount of exhaust back pressure, all without having the complicated mess of a variable geometry turbocharger. And how it does this is something called this balance valve here. You can see the port there that goes to the larger port. And this little sealed off passage here, which looking at this, you might think it's just a wastegate, is how it works. It actually opens by air pressure and actually balances out between both scrolls, between both ports, if the ECM wants it to. This allows it to vary the speed on the turbocharger, also controls the amount of back pressure, which comes in handy when you're trying to push exhaust gases into the intake, which is specifically one of the design features of this engine. Now, you can also see that the turbine housing here has slightly different sizes than that's because the scroll sizes are different. So let's get into a fairly detailed discussion of why they went to this design. So why are we even having this discussion? Why is there this asymmetrical twin scroll turbocharger? Why are there different style turbochargers anyway? Is there anything wrong with the old standard turbocharger with a wastegate? No, no there isn't. The standard turbocharger with a wastegate works fine. But something happened in the early 2000s that changed the diesel industry. Now basically diesels and turbochargers get along really well. I mean, I'm pretty sure Rudolf Diesel himself, after the first time his diesel engine ran, was like, yo, bro, we need to put a turbocharger on it. Pretty sure that happened. Anyway, the reason they get along so well is turbochargers and diesel engines work great because diesel engines are built heavy duty, so they have high compression ratio, high combustion pressures already. Adding more boost doesn't necessarily hurt anything. And they can't pre-detonate like a gasoline engine does because they don't mix diesel and the air going into the cylinder. They actually spray the fuel in as the combustion source itself, opposed to a gas engine, which uses a spark plug, and it pre-mixes the air and the gasoline. So what changed in the early 2000s? Well, basically, the EPA and different agencies around the world wanted to stop re or start reducing two things particulate matter basically black smoke and nox which depending on how you pronounce it is oxides of nitrogen or nitrogen oxides basically to get rid of particulate matter particularly black smoke which is the one you can see you have to increase the amount of air in the combustion cycle and keeping the fuel rates down until you get more boost so they wanted to boost pressure faster and they wanted more boost overall now to get rid of NOx, it's a bigger problem because by increasing the amount of boost, you're actually creating more NOx. So they needed a way to control the exhaust side and actually push exhaust into the intake system with, depending on what manufacturer is what term they use, but 
either an EGR system, which is the most universal term, or CAT's CGI system, or CAT's current NRS system. It's all the same thing. Basically, they are pushing exhaust into the intake. Now, the first versions of how they did this was a couple different strategies. There was the compound turbocharger system, which basically you have a, a smaller and a larger turbocharger, one that's a low pressure and one that's a high pressure turbocharger, and they feed each other. Now, what does this do? Well, it's going to reduce turbo lag. Now, turbo lag is basically the amount of time it takes an engine to build boost. Remember, superchargers build boost basically instantly, whereas turbochargers, since they don't increase boost until they have a higher amount of exhaust volume going through the turbine side, they kind of feed themselves because you can't have more exhaust volume unless you have more combustion gases and you can't have more of that until you have more boost. So that's why it takes a few seconds for turbos to spool up. So part of it was performance related. However, they wanted to control boost more. And by having the compound system, they were able to raise boost pressures and build boost faster. The downside with the compound system though is you can't really manipulate boost by the ECM. It's still two mechanical turbochargers. There's nothing really electronic or anything about them unless they have an electronic wastegate, but typically electronic wastegates are still actuated by boost pressure. It's just controlled from the ECM. The other very common one was something called a variable geometry turbocharger, VGT. Now these, these I don't like at all. The cat used these on their medium duty C7S and C9S regen engines. They had a ton of problems with them. Cummins used a lot of them as well. They still use them as far as I know, and they do have actuator problems. Basically a VGT turbo is it's taking a very simple system, which is a turbocharger, and adding a ton of moving components to this super high, hot heat environment with lots of carbon, and then you're gonna add an actuator, which is typically oil controlled or electronic. It, you're just asking for problems. But the thing that's nice about a VGT turbo is you can actually make boosted idle if you want. You can control the, the amount of boost just by moving the vanes and the turbocharger. But what if there was a way to take the old turbocharger and basically take the compound turbo system with a low pressure and high pressure turbocharger and electronically control it somehow in one turbocharger? You would basically have a VGT turbo without all the messy internal components. And that's what we have here. The asymmetrical twin scroll turbocharger. That's what you get. You basically get the best of both worlds. You get a very simple design with no computers on them, no actuators. Basically, all you've done is change the exhaust housing slightly and then added the balance valve, which the balance valve actuates very similar to a wastegate. This turbocharger, I think, is going to totally take over the industry. Now, CAT's not the only one to use it. Detroit uses it. There's other manufacturers that use it. But I think the VGTs, you're going to see them going away, and you'll probably see these turbochargers taking their place. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and this discussion. If you did, time for a little destruction of the week. So a customer brought the C15 in for a rebuild, and that's what I'm working on currently. And they said their oil consumption went up and their blow-by just increased significantly all of a sudden. So once I got the head off, you can see I just removed the head of here. That's why there's still coolant and stuff all over the place. Starting to look for any cylinder damage. And this is number four cylinder here. And wouldn't you know, looks like evidence of a broken ring, folks. So a broken piston ring will cause this heavy vertical scoring in the cylinder and that is going to need to be replaced of course doing a rebuild so we're going to be replacing all the cylinder packs had about 18,000 hours on this engine this is with the piston removed and sure enough the top piston ring broke right in half anytime you have heavy vertical scoring like that typically you're going to find a broken piston ring and that's exactly what we found here hope you find that interesting thanks for watching